But what if you post a concerns families? What happens if you post, uh, whether it be existing or new families, it brings up, you know, a few questions or, or even some concerns. So what happens even, for example, if you have working towards rating for quality area two, children's health and safety, and a family question you on this? Well, this could spark some conversations for both you and also for maybe the surface staff that you work with. It could make families a little wary and they may be looking for more information and they may be looking for reassurance. So if it does raise, raise some concerns or questions, here are some things you could explain or information you could just share with families. First off, you might think, well, every early childhood service has to follow the national law and regulations at all times. So this is what guarantees that children are safe. Quality improvement is the, is the layer above that, those basics. It's about trying to ensure that all services keep up with the latest research, the best practices, and embed these into what they do on a daily basis. So quality is also along a scale, and the assessment and ratings process is designed to ensure services are continually striving to improve their quality. You can then talk about what areas you've chosen via your quality improvement plan to focus on. You could explain to families the great work you're doing to improve quality in these particular areas. So every service must, of course, have a quality improvement plan. It must be reviewed at least annually, if not more frequently. If you're not familiar with the quality improvement plan at your service, that might be something that you could also follow up as a result of this uh, session this evening to ask your service if they could share more information about the updated quality improvement plan, uh, particularly what, what plans there are for the future, what areas uh, are focused um, and what short and long-term plans are in place and how you can support them. I know some services actually encourage the educators to also have their own quality improvement plan. And if you do, that's fantastic because that hands-on approach will actually, I think, support you in any conversations you're having with families. You also may explain to families that 40% of family daycare services are rated as working towards, and this will help them to understand that having a rating of working towards puts you in the same category as almost half of all other family daycare services. Assessment rating really is a snapshot of any service at a particular time. And the service may not have gone as well as, as they would have liked on the day in some particular areas. However, this is you can explain that this is what you're doing or what the service is doing to uh, improve on the areas so that perhaps next time the rating and assessment comes about that, you know, that you're moving forward with it. Also, what we would like to, I suppose, reassure you is that you're not alone. As an educator, you work in a team with other educators and service staff, and, you know, they may be brought into the discussion as well. If a family or a parent's, parent seem very concerned, you can refer them to the coordinator or manager of your service, um, particularly if they're, I suppose, wanting more specific information or information on the bigger picture. Um, we suggest that services, and that's both staff and educators, take a proactive approach to sharing information with families in both honest and positive ways. And it may be an opportunity to engage families in the discussion about the plans you have for the service in the future. And again, that can be the, the plans that you have in your own family daycare home, you know, what you're wanting to do again, maybe in the short or long term. Okay, what are the important things to talk to families about in regards to quality? Well, perhaps the most important thing is that every education and care service in Australia is trying to improve on quality in their service and, and that is broadly across the service and service provision. Regulations do ensure the basic level of care that a family can expect. However, we don't stop there as we believe all children and families are entitled to quality education and care. You, you may need to ensure uh, that families understand that the children in your care are safe and they are well looked after and they are being educated with in a very appropriate way that we see uh, within early childhood environments. 
So again, we're encouraging to have those conversations and to offer families as much information as as they do need, I suppose, to uh, to have an understanding about what assessment and rating is, what quality is, and what the national quality standard is. So some questions families may ask. So the New South Wales Department of Education has suggested to families that they ask the following questions. Those are the ones that you're seeing on the slide now. We've actually gone ahead and put together some suggestions, some possible responses that you may, uh, that you may consider. So if a family did ask, what is the services quality rating? Okay. You, say, you may say that our service was rated as meeting overall and we were rated as exceeding in quality areas about relationships with children and collaborative partnerships with families and communities. We continue to work on improving in these quality areas and we would always appreciate your ideas. So can you see what I've done there is suggested you wouldn't kind of necessarily just say quality area, you know, quality area, um, I'm trying to think what they are, quality area five and quality area six. You would just give that little bit more information, okay, um, that families, you know, might help bring, bring them on board. The second question, how are you meeting the national quality standard? Well, we're suggesting a response could be, um, that would be a really good question to talk to the coordinators at our service about. Um, do you have their number? We're always trying to improve on delivering a quality service and I'm sure they'd appreciate your feedback. Now, we're not saying that you have to divert that question to the um, service staff, that you, the coordinators or the managers of the service that you work with. No, by any means, you might feel really comfortable and confident open, opening up the discussion or, you know, providing information to families about that one yourself. But what we're just putting forward there is that it is a team approach. Quality in your service is a team approach and that sometimes you, you, yeah, you may want to... Um, uh, to let families know that that's a question that they could also ask uh, staff at the service. The next question, how will you include, um, how would you include my child's interest? So that would be, I would think, in the program, particularly the educational program. And your response might be, well, I always work to make sure what we do suits your child and what they're interested in. We did a range of construction using different materials this week and next week I'm planning to bring together all sorts of things so the children can construct a cubby house together. I think your child and the others will really enjoy that and I think they'll learn from this experience and also working together on it. Did you have anything at home that you may like to donate, like an old sheet, something like that? So that's just, again, another thing that you could do. Um, we're suggesting there you know, reassuring families in, in positive terms and but specific information about how their child's interests are being catered for within the program that you offer. And that may be something that you're already doing. I mean, I know in family daycare, many educators have a very close relationship with families that they work with or support in the communities. And that's one of those lovely benefits of working with a small number of children and therefore a small number of families, which is great and we, you know, we want to maximise that, of course, that communication and that relationship. The fourth question, what is your plan for quality improvement? What we thought you might be you know, able to respond in relation to that, you could say, we're always trying to reflect on our delivery of education and care and to generally ensure quality. The service is carefully planning improvement in particular areas, like our educational program. We're attending or I'm attending professional development sessions and sharing ideas at the monthly team meetings that I go to. We're also reviewing our policies and procedures. And were you aware that families are invited to provide their feedback and ideas? So, yeah, we will definitely let you know when we're doing those reviews and we'll invite you to take part in them. Okay, so they're, they're just some suggestions, some possible responses to those simple questions. You might have noticed a couple of things that we're suggesting within that. We did take a positive tone because we think that's important. And it's not that I don't think it's glossing over anything by any means, but I think um, it's, it's entering into that conversation in a way that shows that you have 
considered that these questions might come up and, and you really have thought about quality and what it looks like in your particular service. So whereas our, our answers were kind of a little bit broader at times, you might be more specific in what you're telling families and I'm sure they'll appreciate that. The other thing you might have noticed with each of those examples, it wasn't about just sharing information with families, it was about inviting families back into how they want to be involved. Do they want to give feedback on policies? Do they want to share resources, you know, like the, the sheet? You know, the, are those type of things happening? So it's it's because family daycare and children's services generally, it's reciprocal. It's both ways. It works both ways. So those examples are ways to, to continue to do that as well. So I hope they are of some help to you. And even the questions themselves, it might be something that, you know, you might be thinking about. All right. Okay. So what, what we've thrown in here is a uh, possibility of more questions. Um, sometimes the questions might be a little bit more complex um, or perhaps even more challenging than we're, what we've suggested previous to this. So what we're going to do now is elicit your help in entering into the discussion and, and what your thoughts are around questions that families or comments, they could be too, questions that they might ask when they see the poster, comments that they might ask or, or, or put forward when they see the poster. So with this crowdsourcing, what we're going to ask you to do is now use your chat box again and pose to us the questions that you think families might ask. Okay, we'll just give it a minute or two and Wendy's going to sort, sort through those and just um, select some that she's going to share with all of us. So, Okay, so one of the questions that's um, come up is, what if a family was to ask, was your service involved in the ratings? Okay, so again, families are looking for more information. Um, they may not be totally sure of the, the process or how it works. And as we know, there's, there's a fair bit involved in it. So in that case, yes, it would be probably letting them know about how assessment and rating happens, particularly in a family daycare service, that um, the service receives notification that assessment and rating is going to happen, um, that the that the service staff, the nominated supervisor, will be responsible for sending information to the regulatory authority, in which case in New South Wales it's the Department of Education, of course, and um, they'll be sending information about the service, they'll be sending the QIP, the Quality Improvement Plan, and also the services philosophy. So that's where the, I suppose the process kind of starts. And from there, then um, assessment and rating will be organised for the family daycare service. So you might need to be then explaining to the families that you weren't one of the uh, educators chosen, or maybe you were one of the educators that was um, selected to represent the service. Therefore, this is how the visit would happen and or did happen, that the assessor actually spends time within the family daycare uh, homes, residences, and um, we'll talk to the family daycare educator about the program that's in place, that they'll be, um, you know, viewing the practices, the interactions with the children, they'll be looking at the environments that are provided for the children, the educational program, um, and of course, because uh, part of the assessment and rating visit is compliance as well. You know, they'll, they'll be working through their checklist that, that those things that um, you need to be compliant with are happening as well. So, yes, as we've kind of mentioned before, it is a snapshot in time. It's a, it's an, assessor, an assessment and rating officer getting a picture of what's happening um, in this particular family daycare service from what's happening in the, the office with the service staff, but also those representing the family daycare service as educators in their own homes. So, yeah, so that information comes together in, you know, in a variety of ways uh, before and during the family daycare assessment and rating visit, but even the, there can be other information that's applied um, afterwards as well. So, yeah, so that, again, families might just be looking for a little bit more information about how this happens. So I've just given you the long-winded version. So you might be taking bits of that information to, to share with the family, or you might even 
you might even ask the family, you know, asking that question, you know, what do they know? What more do they need to know? You know, so if there's gaps in the information they have or, or specifics about it, you know, you might be adding adding there. So um, I'm hoping that, you know, that answers the question, Wendy. Another question that's come through, should I enrol my child as per the rating? Okay. I think that's a really valid question, actually, and whether it came from an existing family and perhaps a, a new family, again, uh, trying to put the pieces together of what is family daycare, what's quality in family daycare. Um, and, of course, this is what the initiative's all about. This is just another piece of information that families can use that, that help them make decisions, I suppose. Whether it will be a decider, well, that might be up to the individual family themselves. But I think if you're responding to a family that came with that question, I would be talking to them about um, quality in the family daycare service, particularly in the program and the practices that, that you have in your family daycare home. You know, the things that you do on a daily basis that is about the care and education of the children. And I think, um, I think families, you know, I, I think individually we, we see and hear quality. I think quality is something that, um, that we tend to have an understanding or a feeling about. So I think, you know, the, the families will be definitely taking information from uh, the environment that they're in when they're talking to you. It will be part of the answers that you give. But again, sometimes conversations might start here, but may need to continue as well. You know, I don't know about you, but how many times have you been asked a question and then come away later thinking, oh, actually, I could have said this, or I could have shown that, or I could have shared that. So, you know, even, even with questions to families, it's okay to start it, but maybe return to it as well if you feel you have more, more information. Um, so family's perspective of quality is going to come through, definitely through the information that you give them about your service, what you do, um, how, how you enact quality on a daily basis, I suppose, how you work with it. Your philosophy definitely comes into it as well. Um, and the initiative with the, the posters and the information, that is one part about it. So definitely it's something that you could talk about um, you know, to, to use, I suppose, for your discussion with the families as well. And of course, and the other thing with the initiative and it, it supports quality practices and straight away, I think of the, the QIP, the quality improvement plan, it might be too part of the conversation you have is telling families about the areas that your service is focusing on generally or the areas that you're focusing on um, specifically um, you know, looking forward, looking, moving forward, looking to the future and, and the areas that you're working on to build uh, in, in respect of quality. So, yeah, so uh, one, one small question could be a, a pretty big answer, really. Um, and again, with any of these questions, I suppose, too, it's going back to the families and saying, is, is that the type of thing, you know, I've just given you that information, is that what you were looking for or is there something else that I could help you with? So, yeah, it's, it's a good question and, and, again, I hope that, you know, that's given you some ideas about how it could be answered or responded to. Anything else there, Wendy? Uh, we've just got one other. Um, how are you working on getting exceeding? Okay. Um, with the, the changes to the national quality standards in 2018, the exceeding themes were, of course, brought in. And I suppose that whole understanding of what exceeding looked like became more of a focus. So you might be sharing that information with families about those exceeding themes. And it may be then, again, you're referring to the, the quality improvement plan um, with that, with the quality improvement plan, of course, what what we're doing is is highlighting or identifying areas of strength, and also identifying areas um, to work on as well. That again, the service might be working on, or as you as an individual have decided within your family daycare environment that that 
you know, you want to focus on for a period of time. Um, so it may be that you, you, you're sharing specific information with the families then, and it might be, for example, and I'm just, you know, just grabbing the things straight off the top of my head, but it might be that um, excursions are something that, you know, that, that you do with the children, but, and you think you do them quite well. Um, you think it's great that you tap into the community that your children, um, you know, are um, evident, I suppose, are identified within the community, which is a wonderful thing. And you're accessing, you know, wonderful opportunities to support their education and, and play and enjoyment within, you know, the community and what's offered there. So you might talk to families about, you know, give them some specific specific examples. So yes, so you're talking about the um, the excursions that you do with the children. You think you do them quite well, but you you want to continue to build on that. So you might share with them some other ideas that you have about other places that you might take to take the children to, and also what the children are going to get out of that. And within that conversation you know it might also be sharing um you know a bit of information about the risk assessment that you're doing as well because you know that fits into quality as well how we're ensuring that children are safe within the environments whether they're inside or outside or actually on excursions whatever so to my my where I'm coming from with that I suppose is you know sometimes we can talk broadly about quality and maybe sometimes when we give family specific examples that actually really helps them to get an understanding of you know how you approach it on a daily basis so um yeah so I think with with that it's that idea of exceeding it's understanding what it could look like again your areas of strength I, I often think with areas of strength you know are they the areas that we we continue to build on are they our areas where we're going to shine be famous for are they the areas that we're going to exceed so it's kind of recognizing what you do already being able to talk about it and also share ideas of how it's going to be built upon as well i i think we're encouraging you to to build, your, build on your confidence in answering questions on having conversations, be as proactive as you possibly can about getting information out to families because then the questions might come from that. And it just goes to show that you're off on the right foot, I suppose, with that as well. So that's, I suppose, um, where we're coming from. And look, we do hope that families are on board with the initiative. However, it may be unrealistic not to expect some questions from families as they try to understand what the ratings mean to them and also to their child. Families may look for more information. They may be looking for reassurance. That's fine. That's okay. We suggest that you're prepared, that you've reflected on possible conversations with families, but also the outcome that you would like from those conversations. Look, we hope that families are on board with this initiative. However, it may be unrealistic not to expect some questions to families from families as they try to understand what these ratings mean to them and also to their children. Families may look for more information. They may be looking for reassurance as well. We suggest that you're prepared, that you've reflected on possible conversations with families, but also the outcome you would like to have from these discussions. What I'm going to ask now is, I suppose, uh, you to, to, to join the conversation at this point. Um, and with that, we're going to do a little what they call crowdsourcing um, and possible responses that you might put forward to just three of those, those questions. I'm going to ask you to use the chat box again and type in possible appropriate responses to the questions as I pose them one at a time. So if you have your chat box ready to go, what I'm going to ask is, um, could you respond if a parent did say to you or did say to the educators and therefore you're supporting the educators, is my child safe? So they're looking at that poster, they're reacting, they're responding to it, they're saying to you, is my child safe? What are some of the responses that you may suggest to them? Oh, 
got one answer here where she's saying that, yes, of course, your child is safe here. That would be her response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, direct and in the positive. Great. Any ideas, again, any any others of you that might like to use that chat box? What would How would you respond if, a, if you have the phone call from a family member they've seen? seen the poster and it and it's just brought up some concerns and again maybe needing that reassurance and if they said to you is my child safe what kind of response may you have okay um i will make sure the child in my care was welcome and feel safe then provide interest activities um i'll ensure the best interests of the children by creating a safe environment and you are more than welcome to stay and play with us to see how we keep the children safe and secure. Excellent. Yeah, and that, that that actually brings out something. That's a good idea. You know, sometimes families aren't, um, Sure, they drop their child off, off they go for the for the day. That in that reminding them that, you know, that they can take part in, you know, one of your sessions or you might put something together specially for family participation, something like that. But but it's almost like um, yourself at the service or the educators you're supporting are are saying yes to the families that you that we welcome your questions. We want to reassure you, we want to be able to answer. Another answer was from Donna. Our scheme follows all the necessary compliance and regulatory requirements for prospective educators and are thorough in their interview and their selection processes. Yes, okay. So definitely from a service point of view, um, I like how that's suggesting bringing in that selection criteria. So um, it, it may be that if a family is contacting you at the service directly, that you're also bringing up about the support you offer um, educators on an ongoing basis and, and, you know, as coordinators, the visits that might be happening, that type of thing. Again, not assuming that families know what we know and maybe they just need to be reminded of how this whole system works. So that's a great response, Wendy. Is there anything else? Um, we have an, actually we've said this one, but we have an open door policy and welcome families to come in any time while the children uh, participate in our activities. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, reminding reminding families that uh, that they do have access to the family daycare environments. Mm -hmm. Yep, That's excellent. Pretty much it. Okay, well, they got some good responses, and again, food for thought. And if we're moving forward to to be prepared. Uh, to be supporting the educators, you know, maybe tackling some of these more challenging questions is a, is a really proactive thing to do and a wise thing to do. All right, now we're going to ask you to use that chat box again. The same, same system's going to take place. Um, if somebody was in contact, a family member was in contact and they said, my friend has their child in a childcare centre that's rated exceeding, does that mean centre-based services are better than family daycare services? How would you respond to that? And, and that may be something that you've encountered already or that you've already discussed as a team. So what kind of responses might you suggest now? Just using that chat box and Wendy will share as uh, some of them come up. We've got one, all services, oops, my screen moved, sorry. All services are very different mm -hmm. and all have their own benefits for the children. Family daycare is unique in that it is a small group children setting that may well work for your child. Yeah, I think exactly. I think that's where I was coming from as well, that it's very individual. And, and we know that. We know that in family daycare, um, that there's, you know, families and, and children in particular that just respond so beautifully to that that um, small group size home environment. And, you know, it's a it's a wonderful thing in Australia, in New South Wales and, and across the, you know, our beautiful country as well that we have family daycare services doing such an amazing job of you know offering quality care and education into the community so yeah I think I think 
that type of answer can be really reassuring to families. And, and it leads the way, I think, to, to then sifting through a little bit more specifically about what quality in your family daycare service is, you know, what particularly you do. I know in sessions, oh, sorry, I'm talking a fair bit, Wendy, you'll get a chance in a moment, <laughs> but um, uh, I know in, in um, presentations and support I've done from family with family daycare services, whether they be educators or um you know, coordination units themselves in the past, you know, I put forward, you know, the question, what are you going to be famous for? What are you, how are you going to shine? And, and not assuming that everybody else knows what you're famous for or what you believe is important. And I suppose straight away that goes back to your philosophy as well. So, yeah, it becomes uh, extremely important that we fly the flag uh, for individual services as well as family daycare. And we know how to talk about why we do what we do. Wendy, is there anything else? Okay, then? so no two services are ever the same. But our service aims to provide quality care and educational progression for our families. We are always looking to improve. Yeah, lovely. Lovely, supportive, positive. up to more specifics about the service in question. Right. One more. One more question. Just something for you to consider. Use that chat box. Um, uh, the question, I look through the National Quality Standard. It seems like there are things you should be doing, but I'm wondering why you're not doing them all. So this person may have looked at, you know, 40 elements within seven National Quality Standard areas and or, or they may just be looking at the poster. If, you know, it, it depends where they're getting the information from, but what could your response be to that? Okay, they've had a look at the national quality standards. They're wondering why the service isn't doing everything. Perhaps a starting point there is just maybe looking for more specific information from them about what they're looking for within that or where they took that information from so you know what you're working with. But what kind of responses might you suggest there, whether they be from your coordination unit or that it might be the educators in your service, how they might be able to respond? Can you tell me what you are looking at so that we can discuss it further? Mm, yes. I think more information might be needed. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not sure about you, but um, I mean, and we've been working with the National Quality Standards for quite a while now, but, and remember there was 58 of them and they were reduced to 40, I think, wasn't it, 2018. And since then, of course, the systems have changed and we also have, you know, three exceeding themes. So already, as soon as I'm saying that, I'm thinking there's a lot of information there. You know, we're working with it and we might feel a little bit overwhelmed with it at times, particularly when something new is coming on. So I think that 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 um, scratching between the surface, uh, under the surface a little with families to know what they know and understand and work from there, I think that might be a pretty pretty good starting point. So, Wendy, has anybody else got any suggestions? Yeah, we've got here our service. So the response would be our service has assessed and made recommendations within our quality improvement plan, key areas of weakness or strengths that we believe will benefit our families. Yeah, uh, and, and I think um, the point there that I'm kind of uh, taking on is bringing in the, the uh, quality improvement plan. And again, you know, our families are aware that we have one and perhaps they're not. It might be a good time to start the conversation just even a little bit because we're mentioning the quality improvement plan and the fact that, that we are forever reviewing. And as I mentioned before, this is an aspirational system where we're, we're working to improve. So, yeah, that's great to bring the, the quality improvement plan into the conversation. Anything else, Wendy? Another one. We try to work closely with my coordination unit to fulfil each quality area. We are reflecting it according to individual families' needs and according to our child's interests. Mm, yeah. Um, that also is a great response because it's alluding to the important stakeholders there. It is the children. It is the families. It is... Um, 
you know, the educators themselves and, of course, the coordination unit staff. So, yeah, the key players have all come into that response. So that, I think that's actually pretty clever there. Yeah, great. Okay, one more. We will strive to do or meet these requirement areas with families and communities. Yes, aspirational. We're working on it, yeah. And and from that ca might come also a little bit more around were there particular points that, you know, that person wanted to discuss? Was there something particular in particular that, you know, maybe um, they needed more information on or maybe that concerned them or, or whatever that might be? So, no, I think that's great. Again, to, in the most positive terms, remind families that we are always moving forward. No wonder we're exhausted at the end of the day. Okay. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's great. And thank you to those of you who participated in that, um, you know, little discussion there. And uh, if that can be of assistance to you as a team uh, and even, you know, the, the bigger team of educators as well, well, we think that's great. Okay, families are going to be getting more information from other source, sources. As part of the quality rating initiative, the department will be giving parents more information through ads and social media posts about the national quality standard and the assessment and rating process. So the department's going to be doing their bit to share more information more broadly. So that might be what preempts the conversations or the questions from the families. It may not be the post just yet. They might be seeing something else or something in the future future. Okay, so this may mean that the, um, that the families will ask questions based on other information they're receiving, as I said, might be before they see the poster. You may need to make sure that you can talk confidently about the national quality standard, the assessment and rating procedure, and also your services quality improvement plan. So to some degree, I suppose there might be some homework involved in that. You going back to the service and saying whether it's you individually or the team of educators with your service going back and saying, you know, there's just a bit more information that we need to really build on our confidence with those conversations. Um, yeah, so we're encouraging you to talk with each other and definitely to talk with your service staff. Also, you know, nothing's to stop educators going onto the department's website. There's information available for you as well. There's information that you might feel comfortable sharing with families or you will, you know, you will alert families to too. So that's, that's great. Okay. Okay. Uh, 